All right. Now, the, the next question, is there any movement toward getting local, state, federal government to condemn her? This is definitely a Stacy question. However, I would venture to guess, based on what I've seen on the website, that Helen of Pavio is trying to now claim that she doesn't do any laying on of hands at all, that there's no torture at all. As a matter of fact, one of her ads is, if you are a witch, smile and call her, and she'll have you delivered, whatever the hell that means. So I, I don't even want to venture to guess what, what, it, what explanation that is. I mean, so it, it goes beyond the limits of what is, what is verifiable, what is unverifiable. These people want no verification. That's what it is. They want to be able to say whatever the hell they want to believe and have no one ever challenge or question them on that. Stacey, I'm sorry. I've been eating up your time. This is she states on her website. Point. Sorry, I'll, ca I'll carry on. So this, this lags an issue we're going to have to deal with. Um, she states on her website um, under Witchcraft Deliverance, she charges no fee for any kind of deliverance in her ministry. This has been so from the onset of her ministry since 1992. She does not even collect offerings in the class that prepares people for deliverance. No offering is taken on the day of deliverance. This she has maintained for the past 16 years of her ministry life. It is only in Helen's ministry that witches have been stopped, delivered, and cleared to worship God without projecting any longer to any demonic realm or circles. So basically, she's, oh yeah, and she quotes from Hebrews 2.15, if you are a witch, smile, get in contact with the woman of God for your deliverance free of charge. Yeah. Okay, let's, let, let's find out where the money trail really goes, because she says there is no money trail here, and we know there has to have there has to be one, because she's a very rich, powerful, affluent person in Nigeria, and that this is the way she's getting her funds. One way or another, this is the way that she's getting her funds. What I want to see from Helena Papio, I want her to positively identify two children who are witches, and we will allow her to do her non-hands-laying-on, non-obtrusive, you know, deliverance of one. And I want to be able to show, I want some way that she can tell me in advance that we can show that that deliverance has actually happened. And then on the other subject, I want to leave, I want her to leave that kid completely alone. I want to be able to talk to that kid and let's just see what happens when that child is never delivered. And let's see if we can get him into a good school and see if we get some, you know, maybe medical care for that child, depending on what the symptoms are. I want a test subject. I want a control variant. I want to be able to show that this bitch is lying about other people's families and causing children to be tortured and causing other people to spend money they don't have in an economy that is way worse than ours to pay this woman who doesn't deserve a dime for anything to lie to them. And there's you know, I think the kids are probably her, just on her website. There's an irony about her website because at the same time as she says she doesn't take any money for anything, there is also a page uh, full uh, of offers for sale of various videos and books that she has, and there's also a donation <laughs> button where you can sign up to weekly, monthly, or yearly subscriptions, uh, and she offers. Um, she offers quite a lot for uh, the subscription. Hang on, what does she offer? I've got it somewhere here. Oh, yes, this is it. Uh, you become a partner, whatever that means, uh, which means that um, as a partner, you will come under our prophetic prayer covering for your divine protection and preservation, your healing and divine restoration, open doors for business and financial success, supernatural uh, favors and promotion, family success and general breakthrough. Uh, you'll be invited to the Partners Retreat, which takes place annually in December. You'll get newsletters um, and you'll enjoy a special discount rate on tapes, CDs, DVDs and books. Get this, I missed this one. But anyway, regular partners with huge financial donations shall have my direct phone number. But she doesn't make any money out of it. Ah, right. Isn't that the in, Pentecostal belief that you that you can cover yourself in armor, right? You can you can get right with the God, and all the material things will come to you, right? Whereas anything bad that happens to you, you can attribute to the devil uh, tripping you up, 
which is why these children make such excellent little scapegoats because they can't speak for themselves they can't represent themselves they have you know fewer legal less legal standing and so if anything bad is happening to you you can externalize that and thrust that blame onto the child so that the child then can be sacrificed I mean it goes to the most primitive types of belief systems but those Pentecostal beliefs are, are also in, in effect here in the US I'll read it for you. Screen. The Unitarian Universalist Church has gone to the UN to protest this several times. Are they a potential ally? Uh, again, we were talking about definitions earlier. Unitarians were actually in, in two of the first half dozen presidents that we had in this country were Unitarians, but they were not the same type of Unitarian as what we have today. Uh, what we have today, Unitarian means all-inclusive. They don't care what your denomination is or if you have one. If you have religious beliefs or not, you can be part of that church. What Unitarian used to mean 200 years ago was that you did not consider Jesus to be a divine character. You consider Yahweh to be the God, and Jesus was more or less a prophet or descended from him who did not also share that same identity. So the definition has changed quite a bit. Yeah, the modern Unitarian Universalist Church means all-inclusive. They don't care about your denominations. They essentially are a humanitarian organization and hardly a church at all. They don't have a central dogma that, or doctrine that they adhere to. When we went to the, the Oklahoma Free Thought Convention, that was actually hosted by the Unitarian Universalist Church. And it was an actual church, and it was a fantastic building. Uh, it, it, it was a great venue to hold a convention like that. New question, what do you think you, Pabio would do if one of her children could be suspected of being a witch or witches? The yeah. murder case that I referred to at the beginning of the program, the, one of the people convicted of murder was the sister of the deceased, 10 years older. It was a 15-year-old brother, younger brother, that she killed. So I don't think there's any stopping these people if they are sufficiently convinced. Well, one of the things that I, that I brought up in a religious congregation once upon a time as a child myself was that the, you should, you know, religion is fine, you know, this is, this is me talking about a long time ago as a child. I said that religion was fine as long as it didn't take precedent over your own family values. Regardless what religion claims to teach about family values, they don't have any family values. That's just the fact of it. The belief matters more than your family, and if your children don't believe, they should be killed. That's what the real family values of religion are. And that was the answer that I got, that, that you should take your religion over your own children and forsake your own children in preference for the delusion that you embrace. And that's why it's such an irony when religion uses the word family in the titles of any of their organizations or their motives. They're not family-based, not the least bit. Jesus even said himself in the stories that, you know, that the, the husbands were going to be torn from wives and parents were going to be torn from their children all over this belief and that you absolutely had to believe, even at the cost of your own families, in order to maintain that belief. So there's no family value involved there. I'm getting in on another rant and I'm off topic again. Well, we've got a, a new question as well. I think, um, uh, Stacey, if you would like to address this first, it reads, are we, fearing she will con are we fearing that she will convince believers in the U.S.? What's the main danger of, her, uh, of having her here? I don't believe that she's going to come over here and convince Americans that their children are possessed by witches and they need to be handled in the same way. I think she knows better. Um, that I, She kind of, I'm sure, plays to whatever audience she has, but the people she will be here preaching to or delivering are uh, Nigerians that happen to live here in Houston. And I don't think it's going to have anything to do with children here. It's going to be about if you've lost your job or whatever, she can deliver you from that. But it's just a way for her to get money. I don't think anyone's in danger in any way with her coming here, uh, besides the people in, or the children in Nigeria where she's collecting the money here and then going back and 
doing her horrible things there in Nigeria. They're going to be the people who pay for this, not us. I'm not afraid of her, and I don't think anyone should be. On my Facebook page, I have tons of people who claim they're witches. You know, whatever. I, I don't care if you're a unicorn. I don't care what you claim you are. But um, they seem to be afraid of her coming here. <laughs> and I don't understand why they would be afraid of that. She's not, most likely if she comes or if she's here, we're never going to know. And she's going to end up leaving and we're never going to hear about this again. But I really don't think, I think this church is now seen by the, uh, the us bringing this to light that this is not, we won't stand for this here in Houston and Texas and America. So I think they're backing off from her, hopefully. So maybe this is the one thing we got to accomplish out of this, is they won't be bringing her here anymore. Yeah, now that, that was my goal. That was my goal. I had no fear of this woman coming here. But for some reason in Nigeria, she has the ability to send the police into the Stepping Stones charity to raid them. She has the ability to lie to the populace about Stepping Stones being a registered charity in England, where she says they were never registered anywhere at all. She has power over the police. Obviously, she has a great deal of power over the community. She can say that Foxcroft is a humanist, and all, and, and all at once his credibility is lost. Well, now she's coming into my turf, and this is where I'm going to take all her credibility away. I'm not afraid of her. I have no reason to be afraid of her. I'll go to Nigeria and not be afraid of her. She has to be afraid of me. And everybody that would support her had damn Skippy be afraid of me. I'm, a, I'm scared of you, Aaron Ra. <laughs> So, Aaron, you, you and I can both remember the days of paranoia about uh, role-playing games and uh, the occult that were widespread in the 80s. And, you know, there was a lot of talk of that kind of thing. Not so very long ago, people were burning Harry Potter books. Now, that's burning books, and that's maybe a little bit less violent, but the sentiment is very similar in a, a, a very vibrant belief in the supernatural power of evil uh, and people's opposition to it. So I don't think that you can completely say that this is going to be a harmless thing. If only in the Nigerian community it will import some of that hatred and that belief. But I think the ideas like to have to be well opposed. That's why I'm so reports. glad you're out there, Stacey. Yeah, if I can pick up the Absolutely. Words, and, because it fits in with the next question as well. How widespread is the belief uh, of, of which is which children uh, in Africa? Uh, I don't know whether um, you were here at the beginning of the uh, program, uh, Carl McDonald, but um, I indicated that in the promotional video I'd done, it included footage of uh, a doctor, I forget his name, but he was an expert witness at the uh, trial I referred to, and his estimation is that there are about 25 million in the area around the what he refers to as the Congo Basin. Um, but in Africa, it is a, a growing uh, problem. And what happens is that uh, churches that have their roots in Africa, but are based in other countries, um, are um, pick up uh, and adopt uh, a lot of these ideas, which is why it is that, you know, people in London um, who go to African churches, and some of these churches are, are, are not open public forums they're done uh, secretly uh, do seem to be believing in this and it, it, it is a growing problem um, and it's getting worse not better and I, so i think that's a danger and i gotta throw uh, in also and I hope also that addresses that question oh and then we'll take the next slide i, I have to throw in something else yeah, in dpr's promo video for this show today uh, the news story that he referred to was people that were not from nigeria i forget what what uh, country they were from cameroon i think but it, was, it wasn't Nigeria. So it is much more widespread. And it certainly isn't Helen Upavio by herself. It's much bigger than her. It's much bigger than Nigeria. It's much more widespread than this. Um, these people want to spread a ministry with the intent of making money. I mean, that's what all religions are really doing. It's either based on finance or it's based on political power or it's based on a, con on a combination thereof. And it's very much for personal gain. 
what they're doing to the, the populace is just keeping their education down. Then they're keeping science down. They don't want to show what's falsifiable. They want to be. They don't want to ever have to test whether or not they're right or wrong in any of their declarations. They just want to make their money. And even if they have to pour their own blood into some children's mouth accompanied by mercury and pure alcohol in order to prove their point, they'll do it because they're frickin' psychopaths. I think it's also that. worth pointing out as well what um, Stepping Stones does, and again, Stacey may be able to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I mean, the, the, the charity literally picks people up off the street. Uh, people who have been abandoned by their families because they believe them to be witches, people who have been physically abused, who are missing fingers and uh, perhaps even more parts of their body than that, who've got machete marks in their skulls um, in, in, as, as a Did aftermath you see the of the attempted of the deliverance children? of demons from them. Did you see the footage of the children that had had the acid baths splashed on their faces? We're talking about permanently disfiguring scars of a significant nature. And even if you, if you look at Upabio's own movie, the movie she made, I don't think that's makeup. I think she's taken some of these children that were traumatized by her own um, exorcisms because you've got children that look that hideously scarred in the face. And everything else about her production shows such a low quality that I doubt she would have very competent makeup. I think she's taking actual scar victims from her own exorcisms, her own victims, and putting them in the films that she's making to support her. We are talking about people that have no moral value whatsoever, and they are declaring themselves to be your moral leaders. That's the worst part about this. I've been, I'm going to take the next caller because I think he's going to expand upon what we've just been talking about. Hello, can uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. We hear you very well, thank you. There's oh, a bit of right. a lag, so do feel free just to carry on. All right, uh, no problem. Uh, you had talked earlier about a figure of about 25% of the American public that believes in witchcraft, the existence mm. of actual witches and you know, while this Upavio style child abuse is actually pretty rare and probably doesn't happen very often in the United States, the belief in a uh, Menarchian battle between good and evil and that uh, children are easily influenced by vectors of demon infection like uh, video games and other children's cartoons and stuff like that, you know, actually is very, very prevalent around. And, you know, while the child abuse that happens in, in these ty types of situations is horrific, you know, there is, there are more, uh, people that believe the same type of stuff that they do, you know, in the United States. The entire time I heard about half of what you were saying, but there are crazy people everywhere that believe even crazier shit than this. So unfortunately, it's scary everywhere. I live in Houston. We have, well, we're self-proclaimed the largest atheist community in the world. I think there's a reason for that. We're in Texas, and very religious city. So I don't know. I just think there's crazy people everywhere. Yeah, I want to throw in that the first time I met Stacy Gonzalez was actually at the uh, Rick Perry, Rick Perry prayer rally. Uh, she was holding up a placard against uh, the, the prayer rally, and of course I was as well. Um, and and if anybody, if anything can tell you how crazy Texas is. Rick Perry is the example of how crazy Texas can be. And that prayer rally was a was a definite demonstration of that. We were talking about people that were praying for rain. And we eventually got it 18 months later. 
Yes, when the uh, the convention. I don't. That's when it. Yeah, the atheist convention is what eventually brought rain, and I think that was uh, maybe an indication of what what the Almighty really wants. But uh, you know, don't don't judge Texas on on that kind of monochromatic tone. No, no, I, no, I never I know, would. I mean, I mean honestly, I'm from Louisiana. I, I understand where honestly, you're coming from. So, Do you, you, okay, just saying that you're from Louisiana obviously convinces me. I mean, there's not many people we can look to to be that, that are more religiously biased than Texans and Mississippi, Arkansas, or no, I'm sorry, not even Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama and Louisiana are the only three states I can think of that are more psychotic in their religious beliefs than we are. So I feel for you, man. Honestly, it's pretty funny because it, in the state of Louisiana, the religious separation between crazy and not crazy, you know, basically goes from north to south with the craziest ones being up there in the north by Shreveport and, you know, down by New Orleans, you know, less crazy. When you're in a state and the Catholics are the liberals in the state, you know, you have a problem. <laughs> in Texas, the closer so, you get to Austin, well, I should say Austin is the, the, the liberal spot, tiny spot. Of all of Texas. Yeah, Austin's a very strange city. I mean, it it it, although it is the center of government for the rest of Texas, it is almost like Santa Fe, New Mexico, and how liberal it is. It it's almost like an oasis in the rest of Texas. It's it's it, it's a, it's an anomaly in a sense. Uh, Stacy, I have a question for you. In addressing this specific issue, and if you want to add into it any of your other peripheral concerns, what would you say that what message would you like to bring out of this show that you would like to convey to the rest of the people listening now? Um, I think the most important thing is to just bring awareness that this is happening. I can't tell you how many times after I started this page that people would come to me and say, this is really happening? This is still going on? And I'm like, yes, unfortunately, this is still happening everywhere. And unfortunately, this isn't even the worst that's happening in Nigeria. It's close, I guess. Um, but I just want everyone to be aware that this is happening so we can come up with solutions to fix it or to uh, keep this at least far, far away from us and help as many kids as we can. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to answer that at next question that's on the board right now. Why would people want to believe that their children are witches? Because they're looking for scapegoats. At least in the videos that I've seen from Nigeria, the, the sanctity of human life does not appear to be anywhere near what it is for us here in Texas. And any excuse they can find they will blame on their own children, even to the demise of their own children, the destruction of their own children, in order to put a scapegoat to them so that they don't have to accept the reality, much less the responsibility, of their own situation. Where that applies. And I, also I can't speak to Nigerian politics. I don't know what, this, what their economic situation is. I don't know how legitimate their situations are. But the fact that they put any of the blame for their situation or even their child's own physical or mental or scholastic development blamed on witches means that there is a much larger problem that should be addressed by the country and the educational system at large. The fact that Helen Upabio and her ministries exist shows that they are not adequately addressing this problem. Agreed. I think the main portion, the main problem is education. They're not given a proper education there. And Stepping Stones Nigeria is one of the organizations that's going in, saving these kids literally off the street, like you said earlier, giving them a place to live. Um, a lot of them have malaria and they're sick. That's where the 
you know, the fever and the crying at night came from altogether, but they also provide them with health care and education. That's the main point. Uh, you just Education is a huge deal, and you can tell that, um, unfortunately, they're not getting the correct education in Nigeria. Okay, I'm just going to take this next um, question because uh, there was something I was going to read out at the beginning of the show. Um, could you kill uh, 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 children in America legally? Of course not. Um, the one thing that we have to make clear, though, is that um, we, we're not in a position to say that she has been directly or indirectly responsible for the death of any child. All that we can say, so far as I'm aware, unless the others know something I don't, all that we can say is that um, she is uh, the head of a church that believes in demonic possessions and also possession by this one I thought was very odd, mermaid spirits and other evil spirits. And she does perform exorcisms. But as I say, we can't well, say one for thing... one moment that she was or has been involved in the death of any children. Okay, while we cannot personally attribute the, the death of any child to her, we do know, we do have confirmation from a lot of different test types of testimony, including the video documentary that was done two years ago, in which several people openly admitted to either having killed upwards of 100 children on their own, or that they wanted to kill or intended to kill children on their own. We do have people that are openly admitting that the torture or homicide of children is part of how they're how they're going to scapegoat their situations, how they have misidentified what these children's failures or or what their their actual challenges really are. And the while Helen Ukpabio and her ministries are not directly the blame of this one thing, we can say that her belief system and the other people in the periphery that believe as she does have been directly involved in the death of 15,000 children so far. At least. That's just disgusting. Now, I remind you, in a, in a documentary movie that was done two years ago, we had one of these people who was himself proclaiming that he had personally killed over 100 people who were identified to be a witch. He identified people in a rural area. He said that there were 1.5 million witches in, in an area that didn't look like it had 1.5 million people, even if you included their pets. We're talking about a very rural community. Okay, I don't understand how you can have, and how do you justify that? Again, how do you identify which is the witch, which, which ones are the witches and which ones are not? Again, there's no metric. They just pull numbers out of their ass. Why? Because they're being paid. They are being paid. As DPR Jones has already pointed out, these people are making money out of it. This is a living for them. And that is literally all that matters. If you wanted to argue about morality and human family value, this goes against everything, and yet that's what they are evoking to keep themselves going, that they, that they claim to be the moral ones. And we, or Stepping Stones Ministries, by being associated with people like us, are being claimed to be the immoral ones because they're the ones not killing children. And that's the thing that I find the most outrageous about right, so this. If you weren't here at the beginning I would encourage the, everybody uh, that's show, watching this video. Um, hold on a second. Hold on a second, DPR, please. I would encourage everybody watching the show to look up Ukpabio, look up Saving the Witch Children, find the videos online, do your own research. You will be horrified at the things that people openly admit to having done and filmed themselves doing. It's outrageous what they have done to children on camera for some sick voyeuristic purpose of torturing these people. And then they think, just as people in the Middle Ages would burn witches at the stake and then claim that the torturous screams of that person were actually gratitude at having the, the demonic spirits burned out of them, this is how they justify themselves over what they do to these children that they subject to these horrors.
and I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to let somebody else talk because I've been on my soapbox for a while. Go ahead. Well, I'll just pick up again and just repeat what um, what I said that this is something that definitely can be proved. It was accepted as evidence in the trial that concluded last week with the successful conviction of these two for murder. They starved three children for three days. They subjected them, all of them, to torture. One of them unfortunately died, but the other two were also tortured. They took a hammer and knocked out his teeth. They took pliers to him. They smashed things overhead. They beat him with sticks. There was blood all over that apartment. This is what people could do. And this leads on to um, the next question, I think. Uh, or it's a, I'll use it as a segue into the next question. I always struggle um, in trying to determine whether these people actually genuinely believe. Uh, and I think a lot of the leaders do not. I do not believe for one moment Peter Popoff believes a word that he is saying. I don't know enough about um, Upabio to be able to say, I suspect she doesn't believe a lot of what she says. But the danger, of course, is that there are people that do believe it and do follow her guidance. Uh, and it ends up in cases that we, we've, we've saw last week. So I, I think it's an interesting question. I tend to go for the fact that they are corrupt and use religion because they know how easy it is to abuse that position. I can answer that also. I mean, as an atheist, it has been suggested to me many times that the greatest way that I could possibly make money and make a lot of it would be by taking advantage of people in, in the, the, the aspects that I know about religion through the research that I've done and a way that I know how to manipulate other people and what they, what they see and perceive from the limited practice that I've had as an occultist and how, it, how easy it is to cause people to see and feel things that you just need to, you know, create the ambiance and follow whatever it is that they naturally already believe and you can cause them to believe that and you can take such advantage of people that way. But when you're talking about whether or not the leaders in these organizations actually believe the bullshit they're selling, there are some cases, as in, we mentioned before, uh, Kent Hoven, where you have an actual psychosis involved, which is why he needs to remain in, in criminal asylum. And then you have people like Oral Roberts, for example. I mean, it, it, it famously, uh, one of Oral's, Oral Roberts' own people came to him, uh, one of his security agents came to him asking for one such person, one person that had been cured, that it had been in a wheelchair, that it had, that it had a debilitating disease that required that they be in a wheelchair and was then, was then healed by him and that he could go and see this person walking around being normal, and so he could just reaffirm his own faith. And Oral Roberts would not produce this, would not give him a name, would not give him a single instance of this ever happening. And eventually, after many times repeating the question, he finally answers to say that there is a lot of exaggeration in this business. And the word exaggeration isn't the one that got me it's the word business that's what tells me that this is all a lie and while you either have psychotics like Kent Hovind or you have willful liars like Oral Roberts and you don't have I do not believe you have anybody that's doing faith healing or deliverance of any kind I don't believe you have an honest decent moral human being anywhere in that entire lot and I, I really need to get off my soapbox. Will somebody please get on their own soapbox and go on for a while? 